Newsreels and sound clips flood the ever-growing mainstream uh, media, from the rights in Syria to the problems concerning the home front of overregulation and government interference. It seems like the concept of more, more warfare in Battlefield is becoming much more factual, in a sense. And this goes for isolationist friends to the uh, East, North Korea, um, who claims that they have nuclear weapons. Now, that's very unlikely, and even if they did, I don't think that they'd ever touch us, but uh, yeah, so they're a poorer than dirt isolationist. Ace communist. But uh, this, they, it posed a good concept for John Millis. He had a very unique idea. Well, maybe just a little bit. It, it basically thinks of what if North Korea actually invaded uh, America, one of the, and just toppled over one of the most, you know, biggest and most powerful superpowers in all of the history of the Earth, leaving ordinary Americans uh, forced into uh, labor camps and forced into resistance groups. And the concept is fresh, especially in a market that's been saturated by Taliban and Russian shooters. And you'd expect from the man that brought us Conan the Barbarian, yes, to the moviegoers, and even co-wrote Francis Ford Coppola's war epic classic Apocalypse Now, he'd be able to pull off such an absurd idea. Sadly, he doesn't. The entire game shows promise, don't get me wrong, but the entire game feels like a rehash of substandard shooters cloaked in Korean livery. <sighs> Nothing really stands out from a prologue in one level. That's about it. Once the setting is situated, it feels like a by-the-numbers and underwhelming uh, shooter. It's basically, the story is non-existent, and the, the, the whole mission of the entire game feels like a secondary objective in a Call of Duty game. And the story advances in such a lethargic matter that, I mean, nothing really feels accomplished. This makes a small five-hour romp almost aimless other than a setting and atmosphere for promised sequels. While sequels can always save a concept or the foundation, but the foundation for this game is very infirm. <laughs> and we all know what happened with the prototype series, but we can't promise the same thing will happen here. Regardless if they build up from this, I'm really disappointed. With such an acclaimed writer writing such a, a wooden game, the concept works, but everything from the voice actors to the dumb AI just feels flat, uninspired, and glitches plague the entire game, often leaving you in frustration. From the enemies who just won't die to NPCs that will get stuck in the environment, these glitches make the atmosphere less interesting and much more vapid. <sighs> Not to mention the numerous restarts from the mishaps. The story is, well, very basic. You play Robert Jacobs, who after being saved by a cliched rebel group, he fights back against the Korean masters and spearheads a mission to destroy a, full, a fuel convoy that could cripple a thinning insurgency. After nine, yes, yes, I said it, nine very short length missions, you encounter the dystopian ladder which includes the resistance homesteads, wastelands, and American icons in disarray. The experience is basic and the characters are totally forgettable. Did I mention that it installs lame turret sessions in it? Not only that, but they also have breaching segments that they obviously copied from other shooters such as Biofield and Call of Duty. Stuff we've seen in the last four years. Could you be any more unoriginal? I will compliment the weapons, they feel very real. In terms that the shotguns work very well and they work like they would in the real world, uh, rifles do their part and I never felt that the weaponry was very unbalanced. Once. And that's a good thing, I really miss those types of games. Sadly the computer utilizing them is amazingly dopey, very stupid, and even on the hardest of difficulties it is easy to beat the game in 4 hours flat. From running out of cover to running straight up in close quarters, it's essentially shooting fish in a barrel. The biggest kick in the balls is the mission selection menu. Not only is it condensed to the small portion of the top of the screen, but it also makes it feel almost as if there was room for some more, but they just didn't develop it. So they just gave up. And the f sad fact is, there was much that needed to be developed. Almost everything about this game feels like it hasn't been finished, 
Which is annoying, being that a game that was supposed to be story-driven, yes, we have an excellent writer who co-wrote Apocalypse Now. Yes, the man that, that wrote helped co-wrote Apocalypse Now, yes, he, he somehow managed to make a, a game that was less than four hours. Come on, the damn movie right here is 451 minutes. So, I mean, it, it kind of baffles me about how lame-brained and how boring this game is and how streamlined it is to fit into contemporary shooters. It's just another boring shooter. And that's the biggest problem here. For something that had such a ridiculous idea and you had to utilize it to make it cool, make it interesting, you, you don't do it. You don't do it, and um, I haven't tried multiplayer, but for the for an FPS fan who enjoys a good story, Miles just doesn't deliver, and Homefront is a story too good to be true. So, for Ron Reviews, I have to say maybe next time. Homefront is a game that you might want to rent if you're really interested, if you really just want to shoot something different other than a Russian or a Taliban, but that's about it. There's not really much here to deliver, and granted, I haven't played... The multiplayer, I've heard the multiplayer is good, but I'm not a multiplayer person, so I can't really review that. Not really interested in reviewing it. Plus, there's, it's already saturated with tons of different multiplayer games by now. And if you're actually thinking about playing the multiplayer now, it's really sad because I don't think anyone actually is still playing it. So, Homefront, maybe next time. That's all I gotta say, but if you're gonna make a sequel to this, Remember your roots, man. You've made fucking Apocalypse now. Or at least helped co-write it. And Red Dawn. Fuck, and Conan the Barbarian. What the fuck's wrong with you? Well, this has been Tyler of Ron Reviews, and next week I will be reviewing Special Ops The Line. Trust me, you want to look into this. This is an excellent game. More information on that next week, so take care.